Hi, 10th Kids. I'm Pastor Annie, and I'm so glad to be with you today. God is here with us, so let's begin our worship service by lighting this candle. Listen, what a lovely sound to hear. Do you like listening to birds? I wonder if you can recognize all the different sounds that birds make. In fact, I think bird listening and bird watching is a gentle activity. You have to be gentle in your surroundings to hear and watch birds. The word Ornithology means the study of birds. People who study ornithology spend a lot of time learning all the details about birds. They can identify what each type of bird looks like and sounds like, what they eat, their migration patterns. They know everything about birds. So let's play a game and listen to some bird calls now. Now listen carefully and I'll see if you can identify the birds. Are you ready? Okay, let's go. Do you know what kind of bird makes that sound? It's so melodic. If you guessed nightingale, you're right. Let's try another one. Do you know what kind of bird makes that sound? It might be a bit more familiar to you because it's a bird that's native to British Columbia. You might have heard it out on a hike or in your neighborhood. Let's listen again. Did you guess an American robin? Some people say that it sounds like the bird is saying cheerily cheer up, cheer up, cheerily cheer up. What do you think? Let's try one more bird call. This one might be a little tricky. See if you can guess what kind of bird makes this sound. I guarantee you that this is a bird. Let's listen again. Do you know what kind of bird makes those sounds? A lyre bird. Isn't that fascinating that God gave this bird the incredible ability to imitate any sound it hears? That is so cool. Now the point is that God gave each species of bird a unique sound to communicate with other birds. He put great care into his creation. And I wonder what this level of attention to detail tells us about God. It's amazing to think that God cares about the details of creatures as small as birds. He cares about the details in our lives too. Let's find out how much God cares about us from the Bible. I'm going to read Matthew 10 verses 29 to 31. And it says this. Aren't two sparrows sold for only a penny, but not one of them falls to the ground outside your father's care? He even counts every hair on your head. So don't be afraid, you are worth more than many sparrows. Wow, God cares so much about us. He even knows how many hairs we have on our head. I wonder if you know how many hairs are on your head. I know I don't. And do you think that's a really important detail to know about yourself? Not really. In fact, our hair count changes all the time. It'd be hard to keep track of the number of hairs on our heads. But God knows and God cares. And if God cares about every single detail about us, even the things that seem small and insignificant, then we know that we can trust him to take care of every part of our lives, all the big things and the little things too. I wonder how we can reflect the heart of God to others and care well for them. 
Remember, our memory verse talks about the beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit that's inside us. God prompts us to notice others and notice opportunities to show care and love. I wonder how we can show this through our actions. Perhaps we can notice and care about details that matter to people. Perhaps we can be gentle with other people's feelings and not speak harshly when they're upset. We can remember that God cares about them too. And let's, let's practice doing that now. My friend Betsy is here to help me practice. Hi Betsy. Hi Annie. Hi Dead Kids. I'm going to think of something kind to say to Betsy. Hmm. Betsy, I really like your smile and I really like the fact that you ask me if I'd like a cup of tea when you go out to get your coffee. Aww, thanks for saying that Annie. That made my day. I wonder what you will say to a person that you want to show care to. I wonder if you can think of one kind thing that you've noticed about them. Maybe you like their smile or how they always let others have a turn on the swings first. Or maybe you've noticed that your mom always gives you the best part of the dinner that she's cooked. We can notice how people are feeling too. Sometimes we get distracted by other things and forget to notice other people. So let's pr practice noticing other people's feelings. Ah, Betsy, you look sad. Are you feeling okay? Oh, thanks for noticing. I was just thinking about how my team lost their volleyball game the other day. Oh, I'm sorry. And I wonder what you might notice about others when you pay attention. You might notice that your brother or sister or your friend is being quieter than usual. Maybe you could ask how they're feeling. They might just need a hug. Sometimes when I'm feeling sad, that's all I need. Another way to care about other people's details is to ask follow-up questions. You could ask questions like, Betsy, what do you like about playing volleyball? Or, what do you like about your team? Or, even though you lost, what was fun about the game? Those are great questions, and I'll tell you all about that later. Thanks for having me. I'll see you 10th kids later at our activity corner. Bye, Annie. Bye. Let's practice some of the skills we learned this week. God cares about our details. We can reflect his heart and care for others too. Now let's do our teaspoon prayers. T stands for thank you. Dear God, thank you that you care for us so deeply, even the number of hairs on our head. Amen. S stands for sorry. Dear God, we are sorry when we forget to care for others in the way that you do. Please forgive us. Amen. And P reminds us to say please. Dear God, please help us to care for others as well as you do. Amen. Now let's head over to our activity corner. Hi again, 10th Kids! It's Betsy and I'm so excited to do our activity corner with you. If you don't have an activity box yet, you can ask your parents to register for yours today. Just go to 10th.ca slash activity box. You can also print your own materials at home and gather supplies yourself. Whatever is easier for you and your family. Today, we will be making bird feeders out of upcycled milk cartons. You will need the following an empty, clean milk carton or egg white carton, a pen, a pair of scissors, an X-Acto knife, paintbrush, some googly eyes, if you have them, a length of yarn or ribbon, and some paint and bird food. If you want to get fancy, you can decorate your feeder with 
twigs or acorns or dried leaves, flowers, twine, anything you can imagine that will be safe for the birds. So first thing we're going to do on the side of the upcycle carton, you are going to draw an outline for an opening with a pen. You can draw the shape of a door or a circle or an oval, whatever you would like, but make sure it's something that's big enough for a bird to be able to get through. And you also want to make sure it's not too close to the bottom of the carton, maybe leaving about an inch or so so that you could fill the bottom with food for the birds later and it doesn't all just fall out. Today, I'm going to try to mimic a bird's wings, so. I'm going to draw about a little loop, kind of like a mitten. And then I'm going to have very carefully opening my X-Acto knife. Please ask an adult for help cutting this opening because it does get a little bit tricky. So very carefully. I'm going to make a slit and do my best to follow the lines as much as I can. Sometimes you can wiggle and jiggle it in. And we're going to follow the line as much as we can. Once you have a slit open, you might actually be able to take a pair of scissors and just follow the line, maybe a little bit better, to make those round edges. All right. Now, very important, you want to make sure you leave enough space at the top so it actually opens and it doesn't just fall out. So we're going to flip it onto the other side and make another opening similar to the first one we just made. So I'm going to draw the other side. Now I'm choosing to do a wing, which is a little bit trickier than necessary. You could just do a rectangle. That's probably easier to, to cut. But if you're up for the challenge or if your parent is up for the challenge, they can try to do a wing. Now we've got two wings. Now you are ready to decorate your bird feeder. You can make your carton look like a bird, kind of like this. If you have acrylic paint, you can paint on a beak and put on your eyes and have the paint cover the entire box. And you'll need to let it dry for one to two hours and maybe add another coat. So, we're going to make a bluebird. You're gonna take your paint and a paintbrush, and you'll probably want a dish maybe, but I'm just going to squirt on the paint. Put it on nice and thick. If you are painting, you might want to put down some newspaper or a magazine, just so you don't end up painting your table. We're gonna cover it up. And you're gonna want to do it on all four sides in the little cracks and crevices 
all around. We're gonna keep doing that and eventually have something look like this. So this bird feeder is all painted and ready to decorate. So you could um, punch a hole at the top of the carton uh, with a hole puncher or uh, maybe with an X-Acto knife and you're gonna have to wiggle it. But be very, very careful because it is very thick at the top. And you can uh, take a piece of yarn or twine and I'm going to actually trim this a little. And feed it through. Feed it through and then tie a knot at the top so that you can end up hanging it like that. And then you can very carefully put the bird food into the carton. So here we have some Cheerios. We're just going to pop them in. You can go on the internet to search up what kind of foods you can feed the birds and put into the bird feeder. Um, yeah, so you can put on the googly eyes if you have googly eyes. And then paint, paint a little beak at the front and that could be your cute little bird feeder. So, God cares about the details. Jesus said that God cares about even the tiniest sparrow and he loves you so much more than a tiny sparrow. When you hang your birdhouse or bird feeder outside, you can be a part of caring for God's birds. And your birdhouse or bird feeder can remind you that God cares about the details in your life too. I hope you enjoyed doing this craft with me. Now let's learn our memory verse together. See you next time. Toodles. Hi friends, welcome to ASL Memory Verse Time. Oh, I'm sorry I came in so quick and so loud. I think I've, I've scared Lammy away. Maybe you should try and use a bit more of a gentle voice. In fact, this next series is all about how the heart of God is gentle. Maybe if I, if I use my, my gentle voice, maybe Lammy will come back again later on. Let's see. But how about for this memory verse, first I'll say it and then We'll sign it. Here we go. 1 Peter 3, 4. Instead, your beauty comes from inside you. It is the beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit. Beauty like this doesn't fade away. God places great value on it. Okay, here we go, friends. Let's try and sign this together. Here we go. Instead, your beauty Beauty is a great sign. Try and fan out your, your hand in front of your face, spread out your fingers, and bring them all together so they touch at the end. Your beauty, instead your beauty comes from inside. A little C, like a cup, and your hand going inside, inside. Instead your beauty comes from inside you. It is the beauty of a gentle, that's our theme, our theme word, gentle, is the same sign for, for soft. All your fingers gently come together. It's the beauty of a gentle and quiet, like you're trying to still something down, a quiet spirit. Spirit is again a little cup with a little, a little wisp coming out of it. There you go, spirit. It is the beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit. Let's keep going. Beauty like this doesn't fade away. For this sign, put your thumbs on your pinkies and roll them through your fingers. Roll it right through. Beauty like this doesn't fade away. God, remember that, that hand right through the middle of your face. God places great value on it. Kind of a, a D hand shape like this, two taps. God 
places great value on it. Okay, let's try and put it all together and maybe if we use our, our gentle voices, maybe Lamy will come back. Maybe he'll feel a little bit better. Let's see. First Peter 3, 4. Instead, your beauty comes from inside you. It is the beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit. Beauty like this doesn't fade away. God places great value on it. First Peter 3, 4. Oh, good job, friends. And well, hey, Lammy, great to see you again. Glad we can be gentle together. And to remember that the heart of God is gentle too. We'll see you next time. Bye, friends. Bye, Lammy. Bye. Hi, 10th Kids. I'm Pastor Jeff, and the memory verse song this month is The Heart of God is Gentle. Instead, your beauty comes from inside you. It's the beauty of a gentle and a quiet spirit. Beauty like this doesn't fade away. God places great value on it. God places great value on it. First Peter. Places great value on it. God places great value on it. First Peter. learning about how much God cares for us. He values what's inside our hearts, how we love, how we love God, ourselves and others through our actions. So let's try to notice details about others and care for them too. Till next time. Bye 10th kids. 